Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this cabin on the water at sunset. We'll be using acrylic paints, and I'll show you step by step how to do it all the way through. Got my husband, Mark, here with me. Hey there, everybody. So we will, this should be, I don't know, about a two hour project, hopefully. We're gonna, we started a little bit early to give us a little jump start, hopefully. And uh, I've got my friends, uh, Cinnamon Cooney and Ginger Cook, who are also painting cabins today by water. So uh, Cinnamon went on before me and Ginger's going on after. So it should be a fun day. Let's get started. So this is my example painting. I painted this on my can uh, Strathmore mixed media notebook. Uh, links to all the things that I'll be using today are down in the description in the materials list. So if you are interested in that, checking those out, you can uh, click on the show more underneath this. Uh, let me go over our palette today real quick. Mark's not ready. There we go. <laughs> palette cam. <laughs> Uh, we've got titanium white, quinacridone magenta, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium yellow light, uh, yellow oxide, phthalo green yellow shade, teal. It's just a mixed color. I'll show you how to do that one if you don't have it. Uh, this one is phthalo blue, green shade, ultramarine blue, and quinac um, I'm sorry, doxazine purple, burnt sienna, burnt umber unbleached titanium and this is zinc white so let me set this aside really quick and I'll show you how I sketched out my thing here um I started out normally I put my horizon line on the third did that make a loud noise when I picked it up okay good um normally I kind of set my horizon line on the third but this time uh, the photo that, that I was using it was kind of split right down the middle and there really wasn't any part of the sky or the river that I wanted to get rid of so I'm I'm doing it right down the middle so it was this is a 9 by 12 inch mm, gesso board it's pre-gessoed ready to go um, you can use canvas really any size you want so we're just going to find the center line and make a line all the way across for our horizon is where our kind of river is pointing to and our mountains will come from. Then uh, from about the halfway mark, just off to the side, one side, we're going to do the mouth of our river right there. And on this side of it, we're going to angle up and just do this kind of wandering line, have a couple of sharp peaks, come back down, another peak, come back down a little bit, up, like that. Hopefully you can see that okay. Okay, I'm using a watercolor pencil, so this will all dissolve into my painting when we do it, uh, when we get going. And, and then on this side, there's going to be a small mountain that kind of comes and angles up this way. And then, oh, maybe about a half an inch, inch from the river here, we're gonna go up, almost at a straight diagonal to the corner but we're gonna kind of cut it off right before we get there and go off to the side like that. So we're going at a pretty steep angle and then right at the end, we're kind of cutting it off there. This one is angling to about the quarter mark. So you're you're cutting this part about half, in half, sky and thing, and this one is a little bit higher than this side. Um, then our river is going to come, and if you just kind of make your, give you yourself a starting spot, pot and really they're about maybe a quarter inch apart right there um, and then give yourself maybe two finger width at the bottom uh, this one's maybe three finger widths there then you can kind of give yourself uh, a place to shoot for this is going to just kind of wiggle and your wiggles will be your wiggles huh <laughs> your, your little side to side motions will be a little bit smaller and closer together as you get farther up and then as you get down to the bottom you can really kind of make some more exaggerated lines so we're going to kind of come around here and I've gone ahead and figured out where I wanted my cabin so that I had a little bit of an overlap 
Um, so if I take this and what's that's about my halfway mark. So about an inch up and our cabin is, let's see, where did I set him at? He's about three and a half inches from the bottom, just about, maybe a little bit less. So if you kind of draw a straight line there, there's our halfway mark. Leave a couple finger widths so that he can fit in there. And just really as big as you want, wide as you want it to be. I kind of kept mine fairly small. Um, go straight across there. We're doing a one point perspective, so this side will be square to us. So we're gonna do that. We want it kind of overlapping a little bit. And then on this side, we're going to shoot for, I think our focal point would be right about there. So what we'll do is use our ruler and we will line it up with that corner there, tilt it, find the edge of our roof and line it up there. And then however wide we want this to be, I'm gonna kind of cut it off right here. This line and this line should be perpendicular. This line, this line, this line should be straight up and down. Straight up and down. And then I drew that straight across, but really we're not going to see that middle part. We're only going to see where we wanted the end of the roof to hit. We're going to split this up the middle right here so we can know how high we want our peak of our roof to go. And I went just above the horizon line. And then I'm going to go from this up to here and match that angle right here. And this is going to go straight across. And then this is going to meet up with that line there. And we're going to do a smaller one that kind of mimics it right there for the inside of that roof line. Okay, so not too hard. Um, then our windows, well, our door will be just on either side here. And then right at the top of that door, I'm going to go ahead and use that as my line for my windows. In nice big windows here. And like that. Okay, so there's my little cabin. Um, and then now I can kind of know where to pull in my river bank because I want a little bit of the reflection of that cabin to hit my water over here. So um, we just kind of needed that to come in a little bit right there and then we can continue to kind of come down and like I said we can get a little bit more lazy and extravagant with our wider um, wiggles down here. So over here we're going to cut back in pretty sharply and then come back out and back in. Doing this S-curve thing is something that's really smart with landscapes. It gives you uh, instant perspective in your paintings. It automatically makes your, tricks your eye into thinking that something is farther away. So having this little S-curve in our river will push that river back. Also having it smaller as it gets in the distance as well. So, and then we're gonna keep wiggling this around and come back to our point that we marked out. So that's all we're gonna do right now. I'll map out some of our trees later. Um, I can actually, right now, we can sort of write in our first set of trees is gonna be right about the roof line of this. There's gonna be a plane here and a matching plane on this side so we can kind of, and actually that's where you want this to dip in because we want the trees reflected down here in the water too. So make sure that you kind of dip this out far enough so that when you put your trees in right here that they will be reflected in your water. Okay, so that's all the drawing we're gonna do. Let's get started painting, that's the fun part. We got a bunch of people come in, awesome. including Cinnamon has Welcome. joined us. Hi, Cinnamon. In there, she did a great job before us. Today. I know, I That's loved her incredible. cabin. That was yeah. so beautiful. I want to live there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can all go in on a timeshare. <laughs> oh, that would be nice. <laughs> we'll just randomly visit. It will be an art commune. <laughs> we can all have little cabins on the river. <laughs> just put a few more in here. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like an art camp. Exactly. I like that idea. <laughs> All right, so on my 
uh, sky. I like to start with my lightest colors while my water is clean. <laughs> it gets dirty real fast. So I'm going to start uh, by wetting down a filbert. This is about a half inch uh, number six filbert. My Princeton um, brushes that I've been really liking. I'm going to grab some white and just kind of pull it out off to a clean spot here and I'm gonna go ahead and just start laying in a little bit of white right I'm gonna go right over the top of my drawing here I'm not gonna worry about that too much because I really want this to go all the way across I'm gonna grab my yellow cadmium yellow light and just kind of press down when I'm loading my brush I'm just pulling a little bit from the edge that way I don't get too much paint on my brush I can kind of control how much is on there at one time and I'm just going to go, I don't really didn't mix it too much. I still had that white on my brush and this white on the canvas is still wet. So it's going to blend a little bit automatically. I'm just going to lightly go side to side with this. And while I'm painting the sky, I'm going to be going side to side. That's a very deliberate choice. I don't really, you're not really going to find clouds that are doing this thing, but you can, if you have any streaks in your paint as you're putting it on, if you've been going side to side, the streaks will just kind of look like part of the cloud. Uh, look, mean, like make, make it seem like you meant to do that. And <laughs> it'll do half the work for you. <laughs> so just do your brush strokes side to side like that. It'll make a little bit more sense visually. And then I'm going to go ahead, while I've got these colors, I'm just going to go ahead and start laying them in my water too. So I'm going to lay some of this color and also go side to side with this color in my water like that I'm not I'm leaving a little bit of gaps with the water because we're gonna fill in lots of different colors as we go up so let's now we're gonna go to the cadmium yellow medium and if you didn't have both of these colors one is gonna be fine this one's just a little bit more orangey and um, so I'm using the cadmium yellow medium as we get up closer to our pink sky And side to side, grab a little bit more and put some down in our water. And I'm using the edge of my brush this time. I'm just going to kind of draw some lines in my water. Just some little ripples in it. This is really kind of more of a river than a lake. It was supposed to be lakeside cabins, but <laughs> I cheated. <laughs> I, found, I found a picture of a river that I really liked. So. This is like the third version of my cabin painting. I <laughs> paint a lot of cabins, so for some reason, uh, this one uh, is a little trickier than norm normal for me. It's just kind of outside my normal floral comfort zone. <laughs> Do a lot of buildings. Straight lines. It just takes too much time. I'm just too impatient. I just want to get the paint on there. I don't want to have to stop and do the math, you know, it's just, <laughs> no, that's just me though. No math. I like how it looks once it's finished, you know, but it's just like the getting there is frustrating. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna spritz down my palette here. Just make sure that I keep it hydrated in all these lights, it'll dry out real fast. Grabbed a little bit of the cadmium orange and I mixed it with my yellows to soften it up a little bit. It's still a little bit bright. Let me grab a little bit more of the yellow. There we go. The trick to this is not over blending. So uh, you just kind of want to lightly go back and forth when you're trying to blend these two colors. Not pressing down very hard. I don't have a ton of paint in my brush and I just want it to barely skim the canvas there where I want those two colors to blend. That way I won't get any hard lines. I can kind of get some softness between these. That's real soft. I, I think Cinnamon calls it dusting. You dust, you know, just kind of slightly wisping your brush across there. So when I get about halfway up the sky, I'm going to start transitioning to my pinks. So I'm going to do that orange all the way across there. Let's not forget our water. Let's do some down here. They're going to be very close together and small as we're farther away. And then as we get farther down the canvas, our waves can get a little bit bigger. But really, they're going to stay fairly small in this. So there's a lot of like little ripples in this water. That, since it's kind of moving water, there's a lot of 
little reflections and ripples that are happening in it. So we're going to go ahead and do like this. And I'm really keeping this fairly horizontal, kind of getting it a little bit angled there, but that's all right. Okay. Most of the light's going to kind of hit in the middle here. Uh, it fans out a little bit, but the 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 blues are going to come in from the sides, just kind of like our sky is going to have its brightest part right in here in the middle, and then our sky is going to get darker as it goes out. So let's grab our quinacridone magenta, and I've got all these colors still on my brush. I'm going to press down nice and hard and get those all mixed in there, and it's really don't have to do much more than that, I think. There were already enough of those colors in there that I'm not having to add anymore, but if you need to, you can add a little bit of yellow or a little bit of the orange. And let's go side to side here. I think I want to add a little bit of white, soften that up even more. Just, there we go. Yeah, make it a little bit more like pink. Could be sunset. I don't know if this is sunrise or sunset. There's, could be either one. Mark's just laughing at everything. No, so you're just going to leave us hanging, huh? Just, well, we're going to have to make it up ourselves. The cabin's got some smoke going on, so would you, Would I don't know if that would be more likely, maybe in the morning? Well, no, either, actually. Either, yeah. either one, so it really doesn't matter. Depends you on make it. up your own story. Okay. <laughs> All right, so if you get down, I got a little too happy, a little far down there. I was trying to add a little bit more white. I'm going to take out the paint out of my brush there. Grab some just of my yellow and pull from this side out. Wipe it off. Pull. There we go. We're going to add clouds in here and stuff like that, so don't worry too much about that. But just want to blend it in a little bit. And really, at this point, I don't want to mess with this too much because I'm noticing that it was wanting to pull. It was getting kind of sticky. If you feel like your paints are getting sticky, you really want to back off and just let them dry and do what they want to do because um, acrylics get tacky as they cure, they, as they dry, they, um, the molecules all start to stick together because they're basically a plastic, I guess. And, um, as they start to stick together, if you touch your brush to it, it'll just grab onto your brush and pull right off your canvas. So if you've ever gotten like a white spot on your canvas, um, or like if I added water to this at this point while it's in the middle of drying, it would pull that paint right off. That water really helps that process. It just kind of washes it away. So um, you only want to add water. You can add a little little bit of water to your paint while you're working, but you only want to add really wa watered down paint to a dry canvas. So make sure that your paints have dried and then you can add washes and, and shade shading and that kind of thing. But, um, okay, let's just keep moving here. I did like that uh, visual demonstration of the, With the hands. I gotta use my hands. The molecular bonding of the paint. The, right. Yes, the, I mean, now I can understand now how Now you understand how it happening. because I showed you that. Yes. That made more sense. We, de we need more of that in the video so we can understand. Shut it, shut it. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we're on a schedule here. I know, yeah. I need to stop talking with my hands and just move move on. <laughs> Keep painting. <laughs> well, I needed my hand for that descrip description. It, obviously, I couldn't explain that without uh, my no, hands. I, I completely understand. <laughs> Adding the <laughs> pink hair into the water. <laughs> See what I have to put up with? It's <laughs> no respect. <laughs> if you're new to my channel and this is your first time watching with us, we welcome. We're so happy to have you. Thank you for coming and uh, joining us today. We do these shows twice a week, and we are all about helping you learn to paint in a fun and relaxing and encouraging environment. Uh, painting can be stressful, and learning any new skill can be stressful, but uh, really feel like the more you work at it, the more you can do it. Uh, you're not going to be perfect at anything that you start out doing the first time. I think that people somehow think that if they don't have talent, they can't paint, and that's not true at all. Talent gives you a little head start or whatever talent means, 
Um, I don't. I don't really subscribe to the fact that I, I do. I've taught long enough that I knew I do know that some people have a little bit easier time of learning how to paint, but it does not mean that those who struggle at it cannot get there. You just might have to work a little bit harder at it, but you definitely can learn to paint. And that's my job is to kind of help make it a little bit easier and sort of explain some things that might help you along your journey painting about 30 years now I guess teaching for most of that time love teaching just about as much as I like to paint so this is a perfect opportunity combines both things I love to do <laughs> and I can stay in my pajamas exactly and Mark can yeah he can be in his pajamas <laughs> we don't have to leave the house it's awesome it's like the win-win situation for an introvert like Mark <laughs> So we're going to start making some purple for our sky. I'm going to grab some ultramarine blue and mix that with my quinacridone magenta. Grab some white. Soften that up. And I'm like, I just, now that I've gotten this bigger palette, because we got the palette cam, I've got more room to spread out. I just make the biggest messes on it. <laughs> I used to be so much more <laughs> contained with where I put my paints. Now it's just like, yes. They just spread out everywhere. Okay. <laughs> a little bit more white. There we go. I'm just going to make it a gray, bluey. Not gray, purpley blue. Purpley. I don't know. Purple, basically. And we're going to go set this aside. It's getting a little sticky. I'm going to add a little bit of water to my paint. Now this paint is dry now, so I can go over the top of it with a little bit of watered down paint. It's not going to do anything to it. See, I needed my distant demonstration so that I could let this part dry. It was <laughs> okay. Going side to side. I just want to mainly get out most of the streaks. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to grab a little bit of phthalo blue. Mix that with that ultramarine blue. And grab some of that white purpley color there. We'll blend those together up here. That might be a little bit too blue, but we'll adjust it. Grab a little bit more white. Just side to side, side to side. When I get to where the colors are are blending, I'm just going lightly over the top. I'm really trying to work quickly so that I can catch that paint underneath while it's wet, this purple paint, so that it blends slightly. Do you, do you remember what your uh, nail polish color is? I don't. It was a random pick today. Mark, yeah, Mark maybe picked numbers and... He picked it out. Did you put it back in its... No, it's thing? in the... It's in the little tote over there. Please stand by. <laughs> People need to know these things. <laughs> okay. So I want it a little bit darker in the corners, and I'm kind of, kind of light it, lighten it a little bit as it gets down farther down and I'm going to bring it in bring that blue down in a couple places so that it's not just like perfectly straight lines but that looks pretty good let's bring this blue down into our water now now we've got some blue in the water I know everybody was waiting for that <laughs> like is the water going to be blue at all <laughs> yes it is it is but I, honestly, the photograph that I'm using has very, very little blue in it. It's only really these bottom corners. And maybe a little bit mixed in the middle, but for the most part, it's pretty. Okay. Um, Cheryl wants to know what color is that pink? Okay. How did you mix it? 
this pink? I'm guessing so. Um, okay, I'm, I'm not liking what's happening here, so I'm gonna switch to a, I'm gonna get a brush that's wet, but not, not got any paint on it. I'm just gonna kind of blend these out a little bit. And it doesn't matter what kind of brush it is. No. It's just making a little bit of a mess right now. But we'll fix it. What were you saying? You asked me a question, I can't remember. Yes, what it was. Uh, how did you mix the pink? Oh, the pink had uh, the yellow and orange from my brush that was already doing it. So it was basically the white, yellows, orange, and then I added the pink, and it, it had that. That red, what, mm -hmm. what is that red color? What? What's that red color that you have that you mix in with it? Quinacridone magenta. Thank you. All right, I'm going to take most of the paint out of my brush here. I just have too much paint on it over here. So it's just doing too much. I actually kind of like that sort of watery, soft. I didn't do that on my original, but I kind of like the watered down blue mixed in with that a little bit. We're just basically kind of mimicking the sky in our water down here. So it's just going to reflect back to us what's up there. Okay. I'll wipe most of that off and I'm going to put in, there were some darker ripples right in the middle of my river all the way up. So I think that's where the current is in a little bit more activity from the water. So I'm just going to put a little bit more of these lines in here again. I'm going to get them smaller, shorter, and closer together as they get farther away from me up on the canvas. And really these are all fairly small. They're not long brush strokes like we would have, um, you know, on the ocean or something where we're seeing long ripply waves. This one was a little bit more short, short and choppy. Um, this water's moving, so it's got a little motion. April said that she's never seen the, the kind of board that you're using. Oh, uh -huh. And so is it is it a smooth surface or? It's what? fairly smooth. It's got a little bit of a texture. Yeah, but it's fairly smooth. So um, it's, it's MDF, it's a panel. Yeah, so. Okay, and there's links down in the description. To something similar, yeah. It's yeah. not this exact one, okay. but I got this these off of uh, another website. But Okay. And to finish off, so because everybody's waiting for the nail polish color, <laughs> it is number 405, <laughs> Berry Treasure. Well, that's a good one. Yeah, from Revlon's Berry Color Stay. Berry Treasure, not like Buried. Berry. No, just berry, like in the berry. blueberry, strawberry. Nice. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Okay, so I think I'm going to switch to my angle brush now. This is a Simmons 3 8 inch angle. Clean out my other brush. Oh, the other day I was doing a chat. I do Monday art chats on Facebook, and three of my favorite brushes. I was using it in my art chat and then I had to go get my son from school real quick and I left them overnight in my water. I, I, I It's been a long time since I've done I was so mad because these were like new brushes and well this one I'd already cracked obviously but these two have huge cracks in them so don't do that. <laughs> and and uh, somebody asked earlier about what level of difficulty is a painting? I, I would say this one's a one of the more a little bit higher difficulty. It's definitely not a first time painting, but um, th as you saw, the drawing part wasn't really that difficult. Um, really, the trickiest part is probably getting the blending in the sky. So if you've done a few you know blending things where you're kind of comfortable with this, I think you totally could do it. Um, you know, I'll show you how to do the pine trees. They're not real difficult. The, the um, mountains themselves, we're going to be doing very, very simply. Um, they're almost a silhouette, almost. So I'm going to grab the ultramarine blue and some purple. And make some nice dark color here. Here, I'm just using up half of my palette for this, <laughs> as usual. It's like 
I have the power to use the, use the palette. <laughs> so we're going to start over here and do nice dark. This area is going to be in shadow because, you know, of course the, the light's coming from behind. So most of this is going to be fairly dark. There will be some brighter spots that maybe are kind of far enough up that they're catching the light. Grab some white and we'll make a little bit lighter version. I want to grab a little bit more ultramarine blue. I want it really blue, a really bright blue with just a touch of purple. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so let's go right up to the top here and I'm just going to use the edge of my brush. Now if I've come down over my line enough, I will be able to still sort of see it slightly through. And if you can't see it, you can just draw it again or do like I do and just kind of do it with your brush with the paint. And I'm going to use that edge of my brush and I've pushed it to a nice point. So I've got a nice solid edge there and a nice crisp edge and I can just kind of use that and run it along the top. Get a little bit of water there to make it move. There we go. You, you know it's a, it's a fine line between too much water and too little water with acrylics. It's kind of half the battle is just maintaining the right liquidity. Using that, Ooh, nice. Thank well, you. you got a super chat from Johanna. Thank you, Johanna. Thank you so much for your donation. And to bring out the cowbell and disco lights. Nice. I like it. I wish we. I wish we had music we could play too. That would be nice. But the cowbell's <laughs> enough. The cowbell is so enough. now, I'm, uh, now I'm going to have to learn an instrument. <laughs> this job is getting more and more difficult. <laughs> more and more involved. I'm going to need a raise. The longer you do it. <laughs> So, no. <laughs> hey, this is Mark's retirement fun. This is Mark. <laughs> We're working toward that. Hopefully, maybe eventually you'll be able to quit and. Today it's my time. second job. Right now it's yeah, he's, exactly. <laughs> it's his weekend job, <laughs> weekend and evenings. <laughs> Get no rest. Important port manager by day, <laughs> internet star by night. <laughs> I think I think a lot of the people you work with would probably be pretty surprised. To, I think well, some of them are getting to know that you do this. Yeah, and uh, somebody said that they listened in and that it was going okay, and then I spoke, and they were like, "Whoa!" <laughs> yeah, kind of like 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 they're looking in. Oh, my personal life. <laughs> it was, You're like, it's like when you see your teacher outside of school. <laughs> like, what in the world's going like, on? Wait a minute. That's not the mark we know. <laughs> yeah, because you're Mr. Boss Man at work. You, you know, you're probably not goofing off and talking about... What was it we were talking about the other day? I can't remember. I don't know. We're a professional organization here. <laughs> We're here only teaching the skills. Right. Right. Okay. So I'm going to just kind of go around my cabin if you want to. If you don't want to have to, you know, paint around the cabin. Another way of doing it is just painting your background completely and then drawing your cabin on top. Um... That's actually what I did when I did mine. I just kind of painted the whole thing <clears throat> and then came back and painted the cabin. So either way is fine. Whatever works for you. We're not going to come come to your house until you're doing it wrong. So just whatever works. Because I don't have any free time to do that. I know. Well, yeah. Just like Unless they're on my way to work, I could stop by <laughs> like 530 in the morning. And critiquing. Critiquing. Knock on the door. No, that would be weird. Okay. <laughs> this may not be dry enough yet. Yeah, I think I might want to just leave that. I was going to start asking, adding some of that lighter color down there, but I kind of think I waited too long. It's starting to get sticky. So we'll, we'll 
let that dry a little bit. We'll work on this side and come back to it. What we're going to do is kind of add some lighter color just right on that horizon line to blend that in and make it look kind of misty, but not yet. All right, so let's use this color, this kind of light ultramarine blue pink or purpley color, the light version, and we'll do this for these far mountains. The mountains the farther away are going to be more blue and more light. Just kind of a good rule of thumb. Just add that color down there. It's a good, perfect purpley blue color for our distant mountains. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice today. Clean that out. If you have phthalo turquoise already, uh, just use that color for this. I I didn't put it out today, but um, I'm going to use about half. Stay a little blue and half the yellow green, make myself a little puddle of turquoise here. It's a little bit more on the green side than I want, so I'm going to add a little bit more blue. You could use a palette knife if you don't want your brush to get full of paint like mine is. I don't know why I didn't just put out my turquoise. I thought about it. I kind of ran out of room. I didn't want to have to put my purple over here. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to clean my brush out so I don't get it down in my ferrule too much. You really don't want your paint to get up in this part because it gets very difficult to paint, get it clean. All right, I'm going to use this turquoise. Oh, that's a pretty color. Right up here on this side. And I can't, I can't really see my line, but I'm just going to guess it's right there. So if somebody wanted to tag you on Instagram, how do they do that? There's a question. It's at Thankful Art. At Thankful Art. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No hashtags. I don't think so. I don't think Instagram does the hashtags. I think it's at Mar oh, it, it could be a hashtag, but I don't I don't think I think it, it, I I don't even pay attention. I think it's Twitter that does the hashtags. We are so technology. But Twitter does at as well, so I don't know. I'm not I'm not up on it. Yeah, I think the at is for your actual, you know, it, if you want somebody to see it. I think the hashtag is just kind of a categorization thing from how I oh, understand no, it. No, because they do. They, no, I see somebody's did a hash, hashtag thankful art in it. It showed up in my yeah, feed? Yeah, noti it notified you, yeah. Oh, good. Okay, good. So okay, we so learned something together today. I have no idea. Hashtag thankful. Art. I have people for that. I have <laughs> who obviously don't know what they're doing. I have, a, I, have, <laughs> I have an Instagram guy that works for me that does that. Name Mark admit, Anderson. You need a smile while your Instagram guy takes a picture. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I don't do a lot of selfies. I guess I'm not very good at the Instagram. Apparently, you're supposed to do a lot of selfies. Don't do selfies on a whole lot on anything, really. Oh, if people saw our vacation pictures, they know we don't do selfies very <laughs> good. <laughs> we took like three pictures of ourselves before we took the actual picture. Of us, <laughs> like of looking, us at looking at it. Looking at the camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, turn the right. All right, let's uh, let's get serious here. We got a painting to do. <clears throat> yes, we do. All right, so let's now on the foreground or the background here. The yeah, we're going to use the teal for our distance and grab a little bit of white on my brush. I'm not really blending them together too much because I kind of want it to be streaky, and I'm going to go right along that 
horizon line and do some side to side, just kind of like what we did with the sky with these uh, in the distance here we'll have this kind of bits of color that sort of have a horizontal lean to them and then as I get to this little area where my trees are going to go I'm going to go a little bit darker just to kind of let myself know where that starts there and I feel like I I feel like it's too like clean looking. I think I want to add a little bit of burnt sienna to it just to kind of bring it down to a little bit more earthy colors. This is looking too much like a watercolor. There we go. Much better. Yeah, it kind of painting around this cabin is going to be a pain. I don't really know why I did that. That's all right. Mm. We have another super chat, this time from Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. They just want to see the disco lights, I think. I think so. I think she's like, she need more cowbell. Oh, and Chad is mooing it up. <laughs> <laughs> Moo. <laughs> it's awesome. Wait a minute, I gotta turn the light off. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, lighter color at the horizon and darker as we get down toward the bottom. that spot and once I put it on then I'm just going to kind of lightly go back through and sort of try to streak it do this side to side thing yeah what honestly I'm going to go right over the top of this cabin right up here because oh, I don't want to have to worry about it don't do it I am don't I'm do it going to oh. I'm grabbing some wider some lighter color so uh what brand of teal this was golden using? teal golden heavy mm -hmm. body mm -hmm. okay and yeah, just plain old teal. People in chat say that you're very brave painting in long sleeves. <laughs> I already got paint on this one yesterday, the other day. Uh, yeah, it was on right there, so not too bad. It's a new, it's from Walmart. It's my Walmart shirt. Every now and then, it was it was soft, so I was like, that'll that'll be a good, good painting shirt. Hey, yeah, when's my shirt coming in? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's printing yet. Oh. I think it's going to be a while. We got uh, t-shirts ordered for our selves. That oh yeah, I didn't put the link in the description. I need to do that, huh? Man, We've I got t-shirts available that. on Teespring yeah. now. So yeah, I forgot about that. And we're going to have a contest probably next Tuesday. We've got five shirts to give away. So. I yeah, want to say hi to Miss Ginger Cook, who's Ginger? joined us in chat. Who'll be following us right after this. Yes. She's doing a winter scene. Looks Ooh. really pretty. Can't wait to see that. Okay, I'm going to go right over the top and just kind of dust over this. These are going to be um, mostly covered by the trees, but uh, there is going to be a little bit of this dark down here behind them, so I want to keep it fairly dark back here. And I'm doing the same color on this side. I really like to use teal. I mean, basically your kind of rule of thumb is the farther away, closer to the horizon, the more blue. Um, blue will help uh, create that atmospheric you know distance look of distance so 
you know, if we've got green grass here and we add blue to the green grass, it would be, you know, this kind of teal color. So that's the idea behind using the teal. <coughs> Plus I like teal, so I like to use it whenever I can. That's just... Right, so... Turning it on its side here to make it easier to reach. I haven't used side cam very much today. That's okay. Whoa, this, I mean... <laughs> you look weird on side cam? No, well, no, I don't have it on side cam, but it mean, it's looking just weird just because it's like the world's upside down all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Get it tilted. Well, yeah, so I can look even freakier. Oop. Okay, there yeah, we just go. went back. Better. All right, so as I get closer to the bottom, I'm grabbing more of my green, and I'm going to use that burnt sienna again with that phthalo green. Kind of gray it out a little bit. I'm still using the teal as well, blending those two together, and we'll just use that. This just does not want to go on smoothly for me today. <clears throat> there we go. And there is a walkway there, but I'm not going to mess with it right now. We'll put that in later. So we'll continue to put in our river bank. And the picture that I was using doesn't have rocks along it. it. It was just grass all the way down to the water line, so that's kind of what I'm doing here, but if you wanted to put rocks down there, you could. I mean, I think there's a lot of ways that you could see there's that fly taunting me. It's the it's the baby from the, from the <sighs> studio the other day. <laughs> the son of fly. Yes, son of fly. Okay, this is supposed to be darker down here. I don't know how we're end up need to get out my glazing medium just to make this paint a little bit smoother. It's not wanting to blend for me today. Grabbing a little bit of that teal so that I can kind of blend through this green to teal here. So I get kind of an even transition. See right here, this is starting to, well this is dry over here and that edge right there, if I keep messing with it, it's just going to lift off. So what I can do is grab a little bit of really thick paint and kind of lightly, very, very lightly kind of come across and get it to lay down there. But if it starts doing that, I would just tell you to probably take it, go get a hairdryer, work on this side, let it dry completely, and then you can keep putting in your layers. Let's put our green in on this side. two-hour project. So. Okay, that's looking about right. <coughs> Clean it out. We need to create some shadow along our banks. So right now it just looks like it's kind of setting on top, right? It's not really blended. It doesn't look like it's part of the landscape. So we're going to just take a little bit darker color. So I'm going to mix a little bit of purple with burnt umber. Press my brush flat. And I'm going to use the tip of my brush. And you could 
if you're if this makes you nervous you can go in and use a liner brush or something you know a smaller brush and I'm going to uh, highlight or shadow I should say add some little shadows in keep them very very small back here along the banks of my river And really it's mostly going to be the bottom edges so where I have this big section right here that's kind of um, whoop, um, this coming over I'm not really going to worry about that too much I'm just going to kind of come around the side here where we might see the shadow happening Press your brush. Press your brush. How did I end up doing that? I stuck my hand in the paint. Yep. I do that every time. It's because I'm trying to, I don't turn my brush. Okay, I'm just going to turn it. Do it. I, I'm just going to stick my hand in the paint if I don't. A little bit of water. That's a pretty cool effect. What, what is adding the Yeah, shadow. what you're doing right now. Just yeah. adding a little bit yeah. of shadow. Mm -hmm. To get farther down, I can go a little bit darker, a little bit wider with it. See? See that? doing a solid line I'm just kind of tapping so in there's like rocks and reeds and things in the water here so I'm going to even take some of these that are close up and I'm just going to kind of tap in some little not necessarily rocks but maybe some weeds or something kind of coming down into the water right there okay let's do the same thing on the other side Keep it small, and then as we get closer down, we can go a little bit bigger. Just a little tapping. Tap, 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 using that edge of my brush. Pressing it nice and flat so that I get it. It's almost like uh, it's almost like a liner brush, but I really like the randomness that happens when I'm using an angle brush because the harder you press down, you might get a you know interesting shapes. It's just going to give you a little bit different shapes than you would get if you were using a round brush. So that's just personal preference. Whatever, if you want it to be a little bit more. Um, uniform or a little bit easier to predict what's <laughs> what it's gonna look like you can use a liner brush or something like that okay tapping and as I get down here I'm just gonna kind of wiggle it a little bit side to side so that it kind of gets a little bit extra down all right see now it looks like okay I can see that Looks like it's part of the landscape. Just doing that little shadow. Really cool. Okay, let's grab some white. Now we can put in our distance stuff going on back here. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that color that was my mountain color. Make a light purpley blue and then I'm going to mix a little bit more over here to make it kind of a medium value so I've got a lighter and a kind of medium color and we'll use that right along here I'm just going to brush it lightly side to side right along that horizon line I can even use a little bit of the zinc white in it if I want to make it a little bit more transparent you can do that
Guess what that means. Super chat. Hey, you're right. Awesome. Yes, this time from Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. She says, I've gotten addicted to your videos. Uh-huh. I want to start painting, but do not know where to start. Oops. You I'm make sorry. it look so easy. Well, good. I hope you do start painting, Kathy. It's, um, I would start um, with the with the beginner stuff, you know. I um, think that that that'll give you a little bit of a confidence boost and I've um, got several, you know, the la lavender one that I did last year. Um, got actually used oh, Q-tips, yeah. you know. That one so is... it doesn't require a lot of investment in paint brushes and that kind of thing. You can kind of try it out a little bit and see how you like it. But I would definitely, I'm going to put in some glazing liquid. It's just not blending for me today very well. Um, but yeah, I've got a whole playlist of kind of beginner level paintings that I think would be you know good to, good place to start you know think that think that giving yourself uh, permission to begin be a beginner and giving yourself permission to kind of learn and not have really any high expectations on yourself when you're first starting out is really important because can be discouraging when you know because it's a little bit difficult any time you're starting a new skill it's difficult okay i'm loading this we're gonna talk about this in a second but i'm gonna show you how to do this mountain real quick so i've loaded up this paint i've got uh, very little paint on my brush you notice there's very little in fact i can kind of wipe it off a little bit just to make sure that i don't have too much on there and then i'm going to lay it almost flat on my canvas and at an angle and just Barely skim it. Oh, I have too much paint on there. Wipe a little bit more of it off. There we go. So I'm wanting to skim it on there. Catch the canvas texture. And create these little ridges of... That maybe something's happening here. So I'm going to do it on all of these parts that are sticking out. Leave a little bit of shadow area in between. So that it maybe it looks like there's some... We'll go a little bit lighter in some places. And then it'll kind of blend down into what we've got going on here. We just kind of blend it up from the bottom with some lighter color. Just kind of tapping, sort of. I'm not really lifting it off the canvas, but I'm sort of adjusting the pressure as I go down. So I might press down a little harder to get a little bit more paint and then I might ease off and kind of skim down and press a little again just so I can get, sometimes I might come this way so it'll make it look like it's more of like a peak right there maybe. But this isn't gonna have a ton of light on this side. These are just maybe the parts that are sticking up enough that the light's just barely touching them. But we're keeping them this kind of blue color because we want, this is our shadow that's, it's it's still in shadow, even though it's catching light, it's not fully lit up yet. So, okay, there we go. See that? And that's pretty much all we're gonna do with those mountains. We're not gonna put a huge amount of detail in them. Um, okay, let's do this side. And this side's going to be the same thing, only we're going to use the teal color as our base. So that was our color over here. Add some white. A little bit more. And... There we go. You see how much of an angle it is. It's just, it's just enough for me to get, to get a comfortable angle. And I'm holding it a little bit farther back on my brush. I don't have it super tight up here because that would change the angle. See how the angle here is much straighter to the canvas. If I choke back on it, I can get a wider, uh, longer angle and get it a little bit flatter to the canvas. So 
hold a little bit farther away on your brush. That'll help. That looks about 26.38 degrees. <laughs> From the engineer. Yeah. Hold on, let me get my protractor. You, you need your protractor. <laughs> you have it in your pocket protector there? Oh. Do you have one in your PJs? I didn't notice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I walked right into that one. So. <laughs> <You> did. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of myself. Pat myself on the back there. That was a good one. <laughs> okay, so kind of fudged over here. I'm going to kind of clean that up a little bit right there where I kind of got that purple too far in there and I'm going to kind of lighten up right here too just like I did on the other side I'm not going to go too far up with it but just add a little bit of the lighter color right along that horizon line right there all right see how just changing the color isn't that amazing I don't know I love that about painting just it's like magic you know it's all it's all just paint but we're just changing the the values a little bit, just subtly changing the values. Really, this is almost all the same color, and all we've done is is changed and made this lighter than this, and it already looks farther away just by doing that. All right, let me grab some green. Let me clean up that little bit right there. So let's put in some of our trees. Now this is fun. I'm gonna use the same brush. Oh, actually, I didn't finish my sky. Let me let me do that while I'm thinking about it. Let's let this all dry really well before we put in our trees. Um, one thing about letting it dry too is that you know acrylics. If you make a mistake, you can usually wipe them right off when they're while they're still wet. So if you let your layers dry really well before you put your next layer on, then you have better chance of being able to just wipe a mistake off. Um, okay, so let's put in some purple clouds. Okay. Which brush did you just grab? This is my, thank you, number two bright. Okay. So like a short, about a quarter inch bright. And really that's not the right color there. I did not use purple. But that's okay. I'm just going to use a little bit of doxazine purple and white. It's close enough to what we used before. And we will lay out some clouds. These down here are going to be very low. Keep them very, very light at first. We can always make them darker. And yeah, there we go. Good job. Thank you, honey. So clouds are basically the opposite. Uh, your sky, you know, your, your uh, foreground is going to get smaller as it goes to the horizon line. And then larger as we get closer to the bottom, right? So with the sky, it's the opposite. It's smaller at the horizon line and larger at the top. So basically the smallest part is right here and then bigger, bigger, bigger as you get up. So your clouds will get bigger as they go up on your canvas. So as we go up, we can make them a little bit bigger and I'm just really pretty much just doing kind of like a straight line with a little bit of a rounded stuff going on at the top and tapering off both sides. Very easy. Sometimes I might just do kind of like a straight line wiggle. See some over here going off the side of the mountain, behind the mountain, so it gives us perspective. So more right there. We get up here we're going to go a little bit bigger a little bit wider and then I'm going to grab some of this color here that I used in my mountain I think that blue a little bit of ultramarine blue in the middle of it and put a little shadow in these clouds 
But once I've put that in there, I'm just going to kind of touch in, stay away from the edges. Kind of touch in a little bit of that darkness right there. A little water so that it blends in a little bit. If you get too much, you can just kind of tap it off with your finger. To. Let me get a bigger brush. I'll get my filbert here. Add a little bit of a wash to our sky. So I'm going to grab the glazing liquid and my ultramarine blue and just kind of glaze a little bit of darker color in here. You can deepen up. The colors of our sky, add some streaks. It'll work quickly with this glazing liquid. Does dry fairly quickly. You can always kind of refresh it by grabbing a little bit more of the glazing liquid. It'll give you a little bit more working time. There we go. And then there's some white clouds. So I'm going to grab some of that white and some glazing liquid. And I still had that blue in my brush, so I, it, most of it was gone, but I, it, it'll turn them slightly blue. And I'm just going to use this white with the glazing liquid and kind of do some sweeping clouds right here. Just kind of side to side motion, blending between that blue and pink color. Grab some of the titanium white and some oh, quinacridone magenta. I got way too much on my brush. If you want to get the paint off, you just kind of smush it like squeegee it off. And it mix it with the white over here. And then there's some big white, pink, fluffy clouds right here. So I'm just going to use this filbert and use that to do this pink clouds, kind of basically the same way, just sort of tapping in straight bottom and sort of fluffy at top, on top, there we go. We're really not doing a whole lot to these clouds. We can go back in here and sort of soften up some of these if they got too dark or I'm going to mess with them, add a few little streaks in here. There you go. Okay. Kind of a pretty easy, I think. And then we can add some of this color down in our water too. So I'm going to add some of this ultramarine blue pink mixture that I've got on my brush right now and I'm gonna use it. It's got that glazing liquid so that'll make it nice for our water. We'll just add a little bit of that over the top of our pink and yellows. Fill in any spots that we've got that are still open. Press a little bit harder on the bottom areas here so we can get bigger wider brush strokes and now as we get up to the top just use a very gentle tip of the brush 
keep it light. Okay. So that's pretty good. I think we need a little bit more darker value in our water. So I'm going to grab a little bit more of that ultramarine blue. And go in right in here and just add in. Nice and dark. Set my brush down and kind of wiggle it and lift. Wiggle, lift. Wiggle, lift. Sort of tapping almost. Go lift. If you get too much, wipe it off. There we go. Now the one thing you don't want is to get too much repetitive. So you don't want your brush strokes to be all the same size, all the same width and lined up. You know, that's where you kind of start to um, have problems doing something like this. So just make sure that when you're doing this that you're keeping it very random, trying to not repeat yourself, moving all the time back and forth up and down so that you don't have lines of repeating you know sameness that's sameness in nature is like nope <laughs> nope nope <laughs> that'll make it look artificial real quick hey real quick here mm -hmm. mary wants to know um would putting a cloud in front of the mountains look Odd. Oh, yeah, no, you could do you that. You could do that? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, in fact, uh, one of the photos that I was looking at did have uh, some misty clouds in front. We're going to do some smoke on our, um, coming out of our chimney. So that'll kind of add a little bit. I'll show you, it'll kind of show you maybe how you might do that. Um, and, and Mark wants to know, where would be a good place to put a tank? What, right here? So facing the house? I don't know. Is it guarding the house or is it going against the house? Well, if it, it was your game, all these trees would be knocked over already. Because that's the first thing you do when you get in your tank. You knock all the trees down. If you're that so bad of a driver, possibly. If you have a clear view of the full, whole playing field, then you know. And then you can knock down the buildings, too, if you want to. Or mostly they're left to hide behind. So the tank would probably be sitting here. Okay. What all right. I've watched enough of your, you know, playing your tank, tank game, game. <laughs> to know. <laughs> Strategy. Strategy. Got to know these things. <laughs> oh, my Lord. People are like, what the heck are they talking about now? Yep. All right. So <laughs> back to painting. All right. So now I want to do our trees. Let's do some pine trees. So I'm going to grab purple, which is obvious color for pine trees, right? And, um, <laughs> of course, phthalo green, purple phthalo green. I, if you notice, I'm not using any black with this. I don't tend to like to use blacks with, uh, landscapes, just like to use purple instead. So anytime you would use black to darken something, I would just use purple instead. Um, so this makes a really lovely, dark, dark color. So slightly, I don't know what color you would call it, but I just really like it. Uh, and... So let's map out where we want to put these in because we've kind of lost that. So I'm going to grab my pencil here. And we're going to start out by... Don't worry, we'll fix this. It's looking really weird right now. Um, this, is, this is the ugly stage of this right here. So you kind of just have to keep working through it. Um, all right. So we said the horizon line was right about there. So I'm just going to kind of pencil that in a little bit. If I did that, I kind of can see it there. And then on this side, I better not touch anything because I got paint on my brush here. Probably not smart. 
annoying me. So right here is where I want that. And then if you want to use your pencil, you can kind of work in where you want to place these trees. Um, I think I'm just going to go straight in with the brush, though, just because I'm a rebel. All right, let's add a little tiny bit of white for these that are a little bit farther away. And right here along the edge, there's a teeny tiny one. And I'm going to start with the more water not coming off I'm gonna start with the trunk and then tap a little bit wider at the base and by the time I get to the top I won't I will be almost you're probably gonna need to zoom in on this pretty tight back here I'm just gonna do some little stick things little sticks little sticks Top cam has just given us your hand. Okay. Well. Oh. <clears throat> that barely touching it down, it's kind of going to pull off some paint, create some little streaks that make it look like maybe trees way, way, way back there. And then right here, we'll do one right here. It's a little small one. A little more water. Let's do it. Okay, so we want it close enough here that it's going to be seen. Here's where it'll help having that dry back there. Okay, so we want it right here so that we can do a reflection right here. So do it right here, straight up and down the tree. Right there. Fine. And then kind of pull side to side with with the tip of the brush. Just pull inside to side a little bit. Like that. Let's do another one on this side. Do tapping motion. Just dragging it side to side a little bit. Create little trees in the distance. These ones are going to be right about here. So we're going to do three, and they are going to be right at the level of the, of the roof line of that. Go right up over the top of that there. This one's a little taller. And this one's right here. They're very close together. And then I'm going to start at the top and just kind of tap, tap just a couple little lines and get wider as I go down. Some of these dots don't even have to be attached to anything. Your eye will fill in the details for you. You don't have to. And really, this far away, you're not going to see the tiny little branches anyways. Um, they'd be too far away to be able to see. So you can kind of get away with just sort of tapping some things that maybe don't have a connection to anything. Let's do another one right here. This one might be a little bit wider. And I'm really doing the same thing as I did over here. I'm just kind of holding it face down and sort of dragging it side to side. It's going to create these interesting shapes. You could use a 
I could use my um, my number two flat bright as well. I could do that and sort of create dots side to side with it if I wanted to. We'll do one over here. Actually, I'm going to use this brush and thin down this paint just a little bit with water and do my shadow under these trees with some watered down paint. And I'm going to need a shadow back here, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that in while I've got this paint on my brush. There, and let's use it on this side too. So it's going to be right in here. Just side to side. It might be easier with this brush. I don't know. We'll see. Straight line. A little bit taller straight line. Close together, shorter. Let's do another one over here. And I'm leaving room right here because uh, in my original one I had a tree right here, but then when I put this tree close, I added a tree right down here. It interfered so I want to leave room so my tree can be right here and doesn't have any other trees competing for its space right there visually let's do two two of them right here let's bring that trunk right down into that dark spot so that it disappears you can kind of put some dark underneath if you need to to hide where it Ends. Let's do a little bit of shadow underneath these two so that they kind of have something going on. While I have this color on my brush, I'm going to grab a little bit of white and I'm going to add a little bit of it back in here too. Just like some shadows might be happening back there in the distance. Just side to side. Very, very close together, small ones back here. All right. Let's do, grab a little bit more green. I feel like it's looking a little purple. I'm going to uh, use the corner of my brush with the this brush. There we go. Make sure I'm pressing it nice and flat so I have a sharp edge to work with. And just kind of tapping, dotting little tree branches. Side to side. And if you can see that tree trunk through it, you probably need to go a little bit darker on either side. Just do a few little dots around it so that it kind of disappears a little bit. These ones are okay, I think. But some of these are going to be more scraggly than others, so maybe you just leave a few gaps. This one's small. See little, little tiny dots. You want to zoom in right here for these ones? Mm -hmm. Zoom in right here. Kind of go straight across a couple of dots is all you're going to need. Leaving lots of space in between for light to shine through. Start at the top on this one. Dot, dot, dot. Leave some space. Dot, dot, dot. Leave some space. Few more, a little bit wider as I get down to the bottom. This one, keep it 
small, close together. Okay, there we go. Okay. That was fun. You're going to want to do those all over the place once you kind of get the knack for it. They're really fun to do. No, <clears> I know I'm going to. You're <laughs> space there. This might be too close together. We'll see. Yeah, I think I want them farther apart. Okay. Real quickly. Water on my rag. I'll wipe that off. We'll move them over. I was trying to fit them in there. So they could go above my horizon line, but I didn't leave myself enough room. Let's put it right here. You might make your mountain a little bit shorter than I did mine there. We can bring these down farther, maybe. So As I get to the bottom, I'm kind of doing this cupping motion, sort of almost. Uh, so the bottom is not straight across. It's got a little bit of a roundedness to it. We'll do this one, kind of coming out. trees there. And then I'm going to add a little bit more more green as I get down to the bottom. Might add a little bit of brown to it as well. These trees will be a little bit warmer. <coughs> a little bit more natural color because they're getting closer to us. So we'll do one right here. Let me see. So I want to fit one right here, right here, so we're going to kind of skirt the middle right here. Nice big tree. Right there. Just kind of dragging side to side a little bit. If it's not dark enough to show up against that, we can grab some of that darker purple color and use it right there. We're, we're going to add some highlights to this tree so that it'll, it'll show up a little bit better than it is right now, but sweep inside to side. that trunk a little bit so I'm gonna get darker with that and then this one is gonna be right here fill up this area keep it fairly small close to this one
Maybe not that far out. the edge there and I'm going to add a little bit of we'll grab that zinc white I'm going to add a little bit of white to that trunk grab that green burnt umber yeah now this one will be closer so we'll get to see a little bit of that if your tree trunk there Shows through, we can let it peek through in a couple places. Okay. in this whole area right here. Give it a shadow. Do some shadowy stuff down here. We can add a little bit here. I'm going to add some back here so that that area looks darker. And I'm not going to put this tree in yet because it's not we're not ready for it. But I'm gonna I am gonna put some of this darker shadow color behind this house and kind of out just kind of using the corner edge of my brush and sort of dragging it side to side. And we can grab that brown. I don't know why I'm holding that brush in the way probably. Grab that unbleached titanium here and I can start adding my path in. It's actually going to be pretty small as it's right up next to the house and then it's going to get wider as we get farther down so I'm just going to do horizontal lines side to side I've just added the unbleached titanium to this green color here that I had I added a little bit of brown and a little bit of unbleached titanium so it's just kind of creating this earthy color you could add a little bit of yellow oxide if you wanted to. We'll pull it right off the edge of that canvas. Like that. And then we'll grab the burnt umber purple color. Add a little bit of it on this side here where the shadow would be. let these trees dry and then we can we'll put a highlight on them too but we need a couple of coats on our cabin so get started with that well actually let's pull it over here so our cabin color is going to be uh, quinacridone magenta and burnt umber it's going to make a rusty brown color ish but it's still going to have some really pretty purpley tones in it color. We'll need a couple coats on this. Grab a little bit of that purple this and use the purple right up underneath the eaves there. Pull it down. Okay, 
And this side is actually going to be darker because it's not in the light. But we're going to add some light to our windows. So we'll get a little bit of light. And we'll go ahead and add a little bit of unbleached titanium to this color. And put in our front side of our building. Hopefully we can find it again since we covered it almost up with the green. I think I found it. Just want it light enough or enough of a difference so that you can kind of tell where to where the end of that color is. Or where the end of this building is here. Some that unbleached titanium. Brighten that up right there. The unbleached titanium is opaque, so it will help cover up your areas where the cabin has been covered. My door is disappearing too slowly. There we go. Alright. Do The roof is going to be a gray that I'm going to mix with ultramarine blue and burnt umber. It's one of my favorite gray colors because it's got a really pretty blue tint to it. When you add white. It's similar to Payne's Gray that Cinnamon was using. So you could use Payne's Gray if you have that or want to use it. I'll grab a little bit of white so you can see how pretty that is. So we'll use that for the highlight. We're going to use this darker color on the roof on this side. You're awfully quiet. Well, there's no questions. Well, You're doing an awesome job. Thank you. A lot of baby talk in chat right now. You don't have any cabin facts for me? No. You don't need to have cabin facts. Cabin facts? I don't think there is any interesting cabin facts <laughs> I can think of. <laughs> Most of them are made of Stickman's relatives. Huh? Most of them are made of Stickman's relatives. There you go. Was I off camera there? A little bit. You always, you know, get me distracted and then quickly move off camera. <laughs> I ask you a question and then I change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. If you were doing this, uh, probably this would be the hardest part. So really, if you wanted to leave out the cabin, out of the cabin painting, we could do that. Make it a lot easier. <laughs> A lot, lot easier. Okay, so what, where was my, there was that. So I want those to line up this corner and this corner too. I don't want to go too far down on it. There we go. Go ahead and let's go ahead and use this color on the door too. Probably add highlights on top of it, but we can start with this color. Making sure that that's pointing at the top of that is pointing at that door, that horizon line too. Remember, our vanishing point was pretty much where that little tree is there. Whoop. Pretty much where that little tree is right there. And then I can use this darker color to kind of shadow, do anything that I need to in front of the house. Might have a little shadow. So you just want to ground it. Oh, we're doing okay on time. I think we're. I think we're going to make our two-hour deadline. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, okay. So for the inside of the windows, I'm going to use burnt sienna.
and a little bit of cadmium yellow medium. I could use a little bit of orange too if I wanted to, but I think I'm going to start with this color to do my glow. Fill in my windows with this. cadmium yellow light and tap in just that middle part there just a little bit of that light and then we're going to use that I'm going to wipe most of it off and use that a little bit in our grass right here add a little shine to the outside of our cabin Add some bushes around our cabin. Just gonna grab that phthalo green, a little bit of that burnt sienna, tone it down so it's not a circus color, as Ginger calls it. Most of the colors that you're using straight out of the tube with heavy body acrylics, especially, unless they're a mixed color like this teal is, your primary colors are gonna mostly be like super ultra concentrated, very, very bright and not really natural looking when you, you take them to canvas. So you most often were, you know, we're cutting the color a little bit by adding, you know, tones of brown or yellow oxide or ochre or, um, you know, things like that that will help make them look a little bit more realistic and blend them in. So there's little bushes in front of our cabin. Add a little bit of highlight. We got a super chat awesome. from Kim. Thank you, Kim. She says, thank you for another beautiful painting. Thank you. You're welcome. It's pretty easy for me. <laughs> Mark, had to, Mark had to sit through me. He took two days off work. We we're going to film some stuff in his cabin. It took me both days to get done. So... Usually prep time doesn't take this long, but I just couldn't find the right picture. So I had to make one up. Which takes longer. But we did get our email list going. So if you want to be on our email list, you can go to my website and sign up there. There's a contact me section. And we'll send out emails before our weekly emails, hopefully. And our son just, just, he just agreed to help me with that. So we're going to hire Spencer to my 15-year-old. We finally convinced him. Actually, his friends convinced him. We've been trying to talk him into helping me for how long? Almost a year now. Like, we'll pay you better than minimum wage. And he's like, no, I don't really want to. And yeah. then He wanted to work with his friends at a local fast food place. Right. <coughs> And then when they got wind of the fact that we were trying to hire him to do emails so he could stay home, <laughs> they were like, are you insane? <laughs> really? Are you dumb? <laughs> so thank you to the friends. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Owen and Aiden. <laughs> okay. All right. So I've made a, I don't even know what colors I used here. I guess it was the, it was whatever color was left on my brush. I think it was the, uh burnt sienna and thalo green and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it a little bit of the cadmium yellow light just to brighten it up and a little bit of the unbleached titanium I like to use unbleached titanium it's a little bit warmer white I use a lot for blending especially if I want to do earth tones it's just a really good color for that so I'm going to use this along the banks of my river I'm going to do them kind of like I did the mountains where I Sort of hold my brush side to side and just skim it to create some texture in my grass. Now, as I get down here, I'm going to actually put in some grasses, so I'm just going to kind of hold it 
vertically and run a few grasses. I'll probably come back here and do some more detail on those, but for now that's... Whoop. Just running grasses vertically there and then doing these side to side highlights in my grass. along that riverbank. Do some on this side. Just kind of barely touching, skimming. So you can see those darker colors underneath. It'll make it look like there's rocks and dirt and stuff. Mark Anderson. You just went off, and I was starting to zoom out when you looked up. <laughs> you would have never known. I'm zooming all the way out as far as I can go. <laughs> you're going to be able to see my apron. You're, you're going to see next. the whole house. It's going to be basically from, like, <laughs> from the space station. <laughs> it's zoomed out. Okay. You'll be zoomed. <laughs> you will never be off camera ever again. That's right. A little bit lighter color here, just add a little bit more of the unbleached titanium. Go a little bit closer to the edge with this. Kind of sweeping back from the edge slightly. Still holding it very, very close, you know, almost flat. Just add a little highlight along there. That'll kind of reinforce that drop off too. <coughs> if we want to, we can add some of this lighter color into that area to make it look like some stuff is highlighted in there too. Just just along this area that's closest to us. Kind of help maybe look like rocks or something. Just using the tip of my brush. Okay. I'm going to grab the burnt sienna, unbleached titanium, actually a little bit of the ultramarine blue, I want a little bit of blue tint to this. <coughs> Maybe crap white instead, there we go. We're going to add a little bit brighter color to our path. Keeping the brightness on this side a little bit more. Just doing kind of zigzaggy line. Dry brushing so that it's creating streaks. too much about this end of the tree but I am going to go about halfway with these highlights and as I get down here I'm not going to do any more down below this about this point because this is all going to be in shadow since this these trees are in front and grab a little bit more of the 
maybe cadmium yellow medium, just to brighten it up just slightly. more yellow but it's still more muted that was just too bright okay and then we'll do this tree dot dot this is very not really easy to explain how to, how to do it exactly. Just keep the brush strokes small and random. Sometimes I'm using the edge of my brush and pulling. Sometimes I'm just dotting. So I'm just kind of doing a variety of both. Dots and dabs and dashes. Grab a little bit of a little bit darker color here and add sort of a medium value in between. Do a little bit of medium color on this one so you can see where it is against that other one. See? It'll really help you if you have some reference photos. Um, so I would, you know, look up some photographs of pine trees in on the internet and just really focus on uh, the overall shape is basically a, you know, triangle, long tip tapered cone shape. But um, I'm going to grab some teal for these farther away trees. People can also go outside and look at trees if they want to. Why would they do that if they've got everything they need in the internet right they got there? the internet? Um, yeah. Just, well, that's true. You could just, just stay on the out. couch. Exactly. <laughs> you could go outside if you have pine trees, yes. Adding a little bit of the highlight on these trees, too. So about um, how much longer? You zoom in a little bit. So I feel like it can be zoomed in. I, I'll be careful. How much longer? How much longer am I going to go? Yeah. Um... Well, I've got to do. The, let me see. Why? Because the uh, next group of collabs are. I don't know how long for oh, prep. Oh yes. Um, I'd say. What time is it now? Uh, so it's ten minutes till four. I'd say probably. Um, got to do that. Got to do that. Got to do a little bit of flowers. Maybe fifteen, twenty minutes at the most. Okay, six hours. Check. Check. Okay. Just adding a little bit of the lighter teal color mixed with just on a few of these. They don't really have to be detailed, but it'll help. Okay, so you tell me to zoom in. I'm not careful. Sorry. She told me to zoom in. I did. I did. It's my fault. What do you do? You you go off camera first thing. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you cry, I look at you to your back. make sure I'm not missing anything and you're like aha <laughs> yep mm -hmm. sorry hon most of the time I blame you for that don't I <laughs> okay so I'm going to switch to a little bit smaller brush here and I'm going to get the turquoise and add a little bit of the burnt umber to it. Maybe a little bit more of the phthalo green. I just want to make a really dark green color, blue green. Don't let me forget to put that pine tree in. I keep forgetting I need to do that. 
and I'm going to now this is where you could if you have a fan brush and you like using the fan brush you could use that you could have used your fan brush on the pine trees even um, so I'm gonna add some grasses here and I'm gonna add them alongside my road here too just a few little tiny brush strokes adding little detail along my riverbank it, it will help when you're using a thinner uh, round brush like a liner brush or a small round if you add quite a bit of water to your paint make it a lot easier to for the paint to flow off the brush it just doesn't want to do that if it's the thicker paint for some reason so adding little bits of grass you really don't have to do it everywhere just your eye will fill in the details just put a few here and there you don't really and you are really not going to see a whole lot of detail make sure that these grasses are much shorter than these ones because these are much farther away see we're getting close to that house so you're not going to have two foot tall grasses maybe you will i don't know just saying keep your perspective in mind when you're doing these little grasses so I'll do a few along the outside of the river banks here a little bit longer now since we're getting close to the edge canvas. We can add a little bit of white. Maybe some yellow to that green. Do some white white grasses or lighter color grasses in there too. Just a few. These can go up over the top of our shadows a little bit. That'll give it, push those trees back, give a little bit of perspective that way too. And then now I'm going to put in some flowers. So I'm going to use some of that quinacridone magenta, a little bit of white. I didn't use very much white today. I've got a bunch of white left over. And that never happens. I guess I put out too much overestimated the need for white and I'm going to double load my brush so I've got the lighter color on one side and the darker color on the other that way I can kind of get kill two birds with one stone and do these little flowers if I run out of one color I'm just going to dip through the other I'm going to do these little cone shaped flowers you could do purple you could do whatever color you wanted what other color flowers are living at your house And then up here, I'm just going to put in like little lines, little dots, dabs. You're not going to see the whole flower, so don't do that. And then over here, I'm going to do kind of just some horizontal little maybe there's a little bit of that pink over here in the fields. Oh, got a little bit off there, sorry. Maybe you're seeing a little bit in front of the house there. And along this side of the path. Our tree's gonna go in here, so we don't need that. I mean, honestly, we could leave the tree out if we wanted to, but I think it helps with the perspective, so we'll do it. A little bit of pink. I just want you to hurry up so I can have some sweet tarts. <laughs> They're just sitting there staring at me, you taunting me. You the bag. There you go. Well, I can just make a whole bunch of noise. I didn't want to make a bunch of noise. <laughs> well, you gave yourself away anyway, so. Oh, you don't. They're not going to be loud. Oh, you thought the bag was going to be loud. Well, that's too late now. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> too late now. Okay. Zooming out as far as possible. Check. <laughs> so you can yeah. eat his neck. Got it. What are you doing? 
Zoom in. You can zoom in you, a little you, bit more you than were, that. You zoom were in completely more. off camera there. Zoom in more. The, that right edge there. keeps going well, off. Okay. Okay, there we go. And then you move it. <laughs> well, I'm going to move it up so that I can paint. I got to move it. sideways with it and then do a little bit more on the outside on the path and we need to do our water hot water I keep finding things I need to do okay mm -hmm. better step it up green orange burnt sienna need to do our shadows in our water just come straight down here and kind of side to side. It doesn't, it's not going to be exactly the move. Water is going to push that reflection around, so it's not going to be perfectly lined up or perfectly the same size or anything, but at least we're going to get it close. There, see? Just kind of doing random zigzaggy shapes and trying to get it fairly close to the same size, you know, same farther the way like that. You can add a little bit of this orange and burnt sienna kind of farther in on our water just to, like maybe there's some shadows in other places so that makes, it's not the only place that that color is showing up. A little bit of golden light hitting some of these back here. And our, I'm going to use that color and add just a little bit of the quinacridone magenta. Actually, I've got a little bit of that burn color down here. We add that and do our reflection for our house. on our house itself and get some white here and some of that don't let me forget to put the chimney there. that's your job the chimney guy because I will forget it all right so I've mixed a color with the house color using the lighter colors here I'm going to use the darker color and lighter color both kind of streaked on my brush here and I'm going to put in sort of streaks in our front of our house Michael wants to know why the uh, 
the reflections in the water are their reddish color or not like a green or darker color um you know that i'm just going by what the photograph was showing me because then in the photograph that i'm using it was it was uh that kind of golden color i think it's probably because it's closer to the gold part of the water you know this part up here is closer to your light source so it's more golden and there's a tiny bit of the darker colors but not a whole lot actually it's very much the yeah the water is carrying golden. the reflection of the of the sun right and then just the shadow is making it a little bit, a darker, bit darker of that tone. whatever color that right. part of the water is yeah. correct right there you go mr science man you had the right i didn't answer you're welcome thank you while eating sweet tarts mind you that's talented okay i'm gonna do darker run out of that color darker lines through here just kind of even out that color on the this side of the house Grab a little bit of that purple and a little bit of burnt umber and shadow underneath that roof line there. Put a shadow right here too. There'll be a little bit of a shadow cast on the house right there. And then we'll put some like underneath the sills maybe. those windows just slightly set those back I feel like the house needs on this side it's just a little too light so we need some shadows happening here we'll get some little darker color streaked in amongst our highlights there we go thank you um, Okay, so the chimney is going to be that gray color, the ultramarine blue and burnt umber. That was the, actually, and I think I'm going to add a little bit of purple to it, too. Actually, that was thalo blue, purple, burnt umber. Make a nice dark color there. I'm just going to pick a spot for it, just a tiny little bit poking out. Kind of made it triangular there. I'm going to use this color to shade the inside of my door there. And the inside of my roof line. Right there. just mixed. Is it right here? There, there it is. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Yeah, that's too purple. I need that ultramarine blue burnt umber. How am I? Okay, got 10 minutes. Okay, making that lighter color. And I'm just going to lightly drag it across the roof a little bit, mostly along that leading edge, because this is all going to be in shadow back here, but I do want a little bit of a detail like in the kind of gray colors, like there's some sort of slates or something happening. little streaks back and forth very lightly barely touching dry brushing some little streaks in there let's put a little bit of that lighter color on our door 
right here, just straight down. side I can go ahead and use mostly white it's got a little bit of blue mixed in with it but it's mostly white to do my outline of my door very carefully like that then on this side I want to shadow it a little bit so I'm gonna grab a little bit of that purpley color and just shadow it slightly tone it down a little bit I still want it fairly bright though so straight and you can also use a pen oops sorry about that is that loud a little bit you could use a pen you could use a Chainsaw. Probably not. Could probably do another little window up there, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to put a little highlight on my chimney. He's so cute. And then if you've lost your greenery around your door there, you can kind of tap in some more. If you need to set that back a little bit. <coughs> oh, tree, 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 tree. Let's do that tree. I didn't use a yellow oxide. How oh. fast can she do a tree? <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> oh, yeah, the new the trees up here were the burnt umber and green. So we'll do it right in here. Take up all of this space, just kind of tapping and sweeping, tap, tap, sweeps side to side. Let me do the tip of it. We got a super chat from awesome. Clarine. Thanks, Says Clarine. that she uh, loves the banter between you two. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for the smile. I think she means us, not the group you two. <laughs> I think. I'm not sure, but... Uh, yeah, because I don't... I don't think Bono talks a whole lot. He's very deep. Yeah, and what's the other guy's name? Edge. Edge. He's got the glasses. I don't think he's on. ever said a word. I don't think so. He's the silent type. So I think she's... Meant, 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 I'm going to take it as us. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, was, I can't remember who I was talking the other day. It was just like, I just love that Marcus started to help me with YouTube because now I have a record of all the crazy stuff we talk about. So this is not any different than our normal day-to-day -day. <laughs> stuff happens all 24-7. <laughs> it's 
just now I have a record of it because I'm always like trying to remember later what it was was so funny what we were laughing about and it's, it's always something so stupid that you know my brain doesn't save it but now we got a recorded record of all the crazy stuff we've said yeah. to each other okay so I had a little bit of the yellow and a little bit of the white here just to make this lighter color same colors that I used over here sorry go ahead what were you saying huh? Oh, nothing. I was just agreeing. Yeah. 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 Now we can. <laughs> okay. So Clarion has clarified that it is us. Yep. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> One of the things that will also help when you're doing these trees is if you overlap in a kind of brick motion and kind of, uh, you know, so that you don't have all your highlights going all the way across in the same uh, on the same level, you could do some here, some a little bit lower, some a little bit higher, and back and forth, some right in the middle. Don't forget the middle part, because I think that's where a lot of people get hung up. These branches in the middle are coming straight out at you, but you're still seeing those tips of them. So you're still going to see, you know, there'll be, some of them will look just like dots. So I wish you had a sock on your hand right now. <laughs> cool sock puppet. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's like, aha. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, focus. Last little bit. Come on. Focus. Okay, so, okay, I did the flowers. Check. Did the. Re okay, I didn't do the reflection of the light color, the purpley color. I need to do that in the water. Yes, and smoke on the chimney. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to use that purpley color and mm, a little bit too dark. Dab, dab, dab. Dabby, dab. Dabs. I'm trying to see what this would look like back here. It would be kind of right in here, I think. Not really seeing the. Unfortunately, the glow is not over far enough to really see it, but that's okay. Works like it's okay. Move on. Move on. Are we there yet? I'm using phthalo blue here. I'm gonna add some real dark. Ooh, that's real dark. Probably need to tone that down with burnt sienna. Now, how do you know to turn? use burnt sienna because it makes a really pretty tur turquoise color i just like burnt sienna and, and thalo blue together just from experience you mm -hmm. know how they mix just from experience okay. yeah. so i need to put some of that down in here in my water because this tree is going to have some reflection going on right here This side, this these trees are going to have some reflection happening too. So use that over here. Darken it up there and darken it up just a little bit right here. some of that pink, maybe a little bit of yellow, we'll add it back in some water reflections, a little bit lighter. So if you get your reflections in there like, whoa, that does not look right, just kind of, you can soften them up by adding some of the lighter color on top. And I can add some bright yellow and cadmium yellow light 
areas to this water here in some places. I really didn't do as much work on the water as I did in my other. I'm going to do some light, bright white right there. A little bit more pink. I need the orangey pink. Four fifteen. Pink and white. Okay. So I'm over. I'm yeah, over time. Time. Sorry, Ginger. Okay. Slow. All right. I'm going. I'm going. All right, I'm gonna quit the work. This is where the zinc white comes in. I'm gonna grab that zinc white and take most of it off my brush, and then just kind of scrub it in. get it to kind of show up against the mountains there. I'm going to add a little bit of glow of yellow to it. Oops, was I off? Just barely. For the whole thing or just yeah, that part? Just okay. okay, I think we're good. Oh, I didn't do a doorknob. I'll do a little quick doorknob. And then be sure you go check out Ginger's. Get yourself a little snack. Head over to her channel from here there's a link to her channel in the i cards and down in the description both so you can just easily follow that over and we're also putting the links in the chat so oh, people very can good. just click on very there good. too so if you're watching live you can yeah. do that all right i think that's it thanks guys so much for watching today i'll sign this real quick and we will be off here i'm using my pigma pen make sure i've got a finger width above it let's do it over here There we go. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Be sure if you want the traceable for this, you can get that on Patreon. And the link is down in the description. It's it's patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. So I will have that available, available too. All right. Thanks again. Bye.